Hi there, nice to meet you. My name is Renan Santiago de Souza. I'm a music educator and also a substitute professor here in Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And today I would like to share with you some outcomes of my research called Religious Racism in Brazilian Music Education, an analysis of the colonial online course. First of all, what is religious racism? I believe that everybody knows that racism is a systematic discrimination and prejudice toward non-white people. Here in Brazilian context, it is especially toward brown and black people. It can be extended toward black culture, black epistemology and black spirituality. It means that you don't need to be black to suffer racism if you identify as yourself. If black culture, black epistemology and black spirituality you can suffer racism for that. Uh, so, by this means, religion racism can be defined as their structural prejudice towards African rooted religion believers. And some research shows up that the main target of religion racism in Brazil is the candomblé believers. Maybe you are asking yourself right now what is candomblé? It is a collective noun that includes a variety of Afro-Brazilian religions like Candomblé, Jeje, Angola, Ketunagô, Jurema, Kibanda, Xangô do Recife, Batuque, Tambor de Mina. Even though these religions are different from each other, they have similarities that make possible to classify them inside the Candomblé category. What are these similarities? First of all, they all are Afro-Brazilian religions. Second, they worship the divine ancestry, called Orishas, Inquises, or Vuduns, including some that lived in Africa or that were enslaved people in colonial Brazilian era. Third one, their ceremonies are centered in music. It's very important. For the beat of the Atapax, it is a set of three sacred drums, occurs a kind of medianic trance. It is the belief that the divine ancestry that they worship comes to her and incarnate in some of them. After that, this ancestral dance uh, and lead the celebration party. In other words, without music, it's not possible to have candle service. It is also very important to, to, to highlight that Brazilian popular music like samba, bossa nova, and baião has influenced by candomblé music. So um, the music, the candomblé music, is very, very important to Brazilian culture at all. So how's the music in a candomblé ceremony? It's very important to highlight that the songs are usually sung in African language, for instance. Uh, we have songs in Yoruba, a language from Nigeria. We have songs in Umbundo and Kimbundo, language from Angola, and our songs in Ewe Fon, language from Ghana. These songs has the whole of uh, worship and invocate the, the, the Orishas uh, from the spiritual world to earth. And the songs are accompanied from some music instruments, uh, the Agogo, Shekere, and hum, humpi and le. The agogo is like a cowbell and you play using this. The shekere is a very big kabasha. It's a weird colored kabasha. And we put some bands on it. And we play like this. And finally, the three sacred drums, called atabak. The set of three drums are called atabak, but each atabak has a specific name. Han, Hompi, and Le. I will show you. Han, Hompi, and Le. Okay, how religious racism happens in Brazilian music education? 
Even though it is important to Brazilian like music, the Candomblé culture and the Candomblé believers themselves are few esteemed in schools and universities. Why? For a reason I call demonization of Orishas. What's this? Some people believe that Orishas are the demons of the Christian traditions. It's very important to say that it is absol absolutely wrong. No, the Orishas are not the demons of Christian tradition. But many Brazilians think like this. So everything related if Candomblé, not only the Candomblé itself, but the Candomblé believers are avoided because they think um, everything related it candomblé are by evil are from evil uh, and it have influenced Brazilian music education unfortunately I myself one day was rebooked by my former nation in a school where I worked because I tried to teach a candomblé music in elementary school she said to me why are you teaching macumba here what is macumba Macumba is a very racist and pejorative name um, associated related with Candomblé. Candomblé is called Macumba pejoratively. Uh, and she screamed it aloud uh, inside the classroom in front of all students. I was teaching to eight, nine old years kids, so it was absolutely wrong. Um, in other opportunity, I was invited to the principal's room in order to speak with her because a mother of a student said I was teaching about Macumba instrument. Yes, I was speaking about Agogo, about Shekere, about uh, Atabax, about very important instrument to Brazilian culture. But I was rebooked because these instruments are seen as something evil are seen as something bad because they are used in candomblé ceremonies and few years ago i was not there but it was very reported by the media that in the university where i work where i teach nowadays the federal university of rio de janeiro in a core class the professor bought a song called xango by tovila lobos the greatest brazilian composer xango is a orisha the Christians present there refused to sing the song, afraid of becoming incorporated by Shango. As I've said, uh, in Candomblé ceremonies, people sing the songs in order to be incorporated by some Orisha, but it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens in a religious context, not in academic context. And they said they wouldn't sing because it would be a sin to sing that song. So we can see that religious racism of the society also influence on music education. Problem in the fight. How to change this reality? Now the objective of the research. In order to contribute to change this reality in Brazilian music education, this research aimed to plan and analyze a two lessons online course about Candomblé music and music education how it was done. The course was finished in the first trimester of 2021. It was offered to music teachers in training from three Rio de Janeiro universities. The first online lesson was administered by me. This lesson was about three recall issues concerning hip theory, music instruments and candomblé beliefs, as well as the colonial thinking and the colonial music education. In order to teach about the topics of candomblé culture, I had administered informal interviews with four candomblé beliefs, two alabés, what is an alabé is the cleric that plays the drums in candomblé ceremonies, a professional musician and music teacher, and a scholar. In the interviews, the interviewees could give some clues about how to teach candomblé music and music classes. These clues were also presented in the course. The second and last lesson was an online tic-tac concert administered by a handmade Alibé and professional musician. In this concert, the Alibé presented some music from his religions, explained its meaning and its use in Candomblé, and also answered questions done by the students. After the lessons, 
as a way to reevaluate the cues, the music teacher's in training wrote some paragraphs about the experience of watching the Tic Tac concert and about what they had learned about cantable system music in these two lessons. These writings were analyzed through content analysis in order to understand how much the curves have affected student attitudes to teach and cantable system music in educational settings. The interviews I did only three questions. How do you think your religion is seen by the society? This music education can contribute to reduce religious racism. We will give us some clues in order to help music teachers in valuing candomblé music in music classes and analyzing the answers I got some outcomes. First of all, all interviews confirmed that they are proud in being candomblé believers. But unfortunately, all of them are targets of religious racism and receive different treatment in society, in schools and university. For instance, the music teacher that I was that was interviewed said that she cannot use contemporary music in her music classes because the student refuse to sing that music for three reasons: because they are Christian. Second reason, because they say singing Candomblé music is a sin and because Candomblé music are of the devil. And it's very sad to say this, but the news of one interviewer was stoned, yes, stoned by her colleagues for hearing a typical Candomblé clothes at school. I will try to explain. There is a specific Candomblé ritual that the person needs to be um, dressed if a all right outfit for several days so the person go to school go to work normally but he or she needs to be dressed all white and i'm speaking about a kid a condolences kid um, dressed all right she went to school and she was stunned by other kids um do you understand it's stunning uh it's very symbolical because Brazil is a Christian society. And in Bible, in the Bible, what is stoning? Stoning is the punishment for someone that is a sinner. So what is implicit here? Candomblé people are sinners. It's very, very dangerous. It's very critical. And we need to change this reality. How to change this reality? Uh, through music education. First of all, uh, the interview said that we need to recognize that music education is not racially neutral, is the first step. Therefore, music education practices must struggle with structural, epistemic, and religious racism. This is struggling with racism in schools and universities must be done constantly and not only in black holidays like Black Star Month or Black Awareness Day. In lessons about candomblé music, outside and natural space must be valued because candomblé is a religion that worship the force of the nature. Uh, as I've said, candomblé worship orishas, but each orishas is related if some force of the nature, for example, the wind, the, the rivers, the sea, among others. Similarly, they all say that candomblé must be present as a complex cosmic vision and philosophy of life, not only a religion, but a way to live the life. And it was also quoted that it's important to let students know relevant candomblé musicians in Brazilian music scenario. In matter of fact, we have a lot of candomblé musicians, especially percussionists, and these musicians have learned uh, how to play the drums in candomblé. So we need to say this uh, in, in, in school. Uh, do you know this musician? Oh yeah, he is a candomblé seed. He has learned how to play the drums in, in candomblé. And there is no problem about this. Do you like them? Do you like he? Do you like she? So it's not problem in being a candomblé seed. The, teach, uh, the teacher should show respect to the candomblé sacred procedures, especially when they become related to their repertoire and or music instrument being taught. For instance, it was said that the atabaks must be covered if a 
what booklet of the lessons. So after using <laughs> then I will cover then if I what booklet. Finally, it was said by the interviews that the music teacher should teach about how Candomblé influenced on several Brazilian genres like samba, pagode, baião, capoeira, among others. How it was the course. As I've said, the first lesson was ministered by me, and it was a theoretical lesson about the, the, the term. First, I thought that religion is also a cultural product, and for that, it produces identities that can be ear exact. I also say that, for different reasons, like the impositions done on colonial era, that Christianity is, nowadays, the normative religion in Brazil, and the other religions can be undervaluated for that. At this point, we talked about the colonial thinking, highlighting the cosmogonic coloniality that is related with the religious racism. After that, I showed some videos that show up candomblé believers, unfortunately, suffering religious racism in society. For instance, a candomblé cleric being obligated to demolish his old temple, a student being not allowed to enter in a public school using ceremonial candomblé clothes, and a Christian, Christian pastor that suffered visceral attacks for helping a candomblé temple to be rebuilt after it be gravely vandalized. Finally, we could discuss the outcomes of the interviews I had administered with candomblé believers. All in all, it was a lesson that could bring the student into the town, but it was necessary an authentic explanation coming from the very glance of a candomblé clarity. And it was done in the second lesson. It was a didactic concert ministered by a professional percussionist and alibi. This lesson was well received by the student and they could make questions directly for the alibi who sent to them by email several audios of candomblé music in a book that explains the candomblé culture. Its types were constructed by the alabe, showing the importance of someone if place of speech if us. And I'm very happy to say that it had, we had a candomblé student among us, and he said he felt represented uh, if the presence of an alabe teaching to us. What the students wrote in their evaluations? Some students wrote that, through the course, they could realize that religious racism is very real in society. Some of them wrote texts demonstrating surprise because they could not believe this kind of thing exists nowadays. Similarly, many students wrote that they could learn more about different culture. Therefore, in this perspective, this course was very positive for their preparation as music teachers. In other words, their cultural horizon was broadened. It was interesting to note that many students, when we realized the prejudices that candomblé believers suffer in society, could relate this kind of prejudice if situation they lived in. For example, we had a Jewish student that said, as candomblé people suffer, um, discrimination in Brazilian society, we also suffer discrimination. In many texts, the student could show that they had learned about complex academic concepts, like the definition of culture, identity, and the colonial pedagogy. We also had criticized. For instance, a student recognized that candomblacists are target of prejudice in Brazil, but Jews and Muslims also are and the course did not analyze this religion's identities. Moreover, another student said that it was too many content for our short light lessons. This presentation is coming to its end now, concluding remarks. This research points out that the colonial thinking can also contribute to identify and avoid religious racism in music education. In a general way, this course was very successful, creating cultural awareness and cultural knowledge amidst the music teachers in preparation. But it's true that more must be done in order to religious racism be exported from music education, so that, starting from the limitations observed in this research, is being suggested new research done in other contexts that could analyze 
how religion racism occurs in other religions and also analyzing the perception of other subjects like professors, school teachers and managers and children parents. These are the reference quoted and that's it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Questions?